good afternoon, some beautiful girls. Thank you. Tsunami warning received. Ms. Howell, head of the Crisis Management Committee. Tsunami warning received. I'm good enough.
Because every sheltering must be registered. As well, maybe have a proper head count of you all. Alright? Yeah. So anybody getting a little impatient and rowdy, it's understandable. But we'll call the police for this. <laughs> <laughs> so if you choose to be a rowdy, there's no problem, I know. So go right ahead, we just call the police for this. Alright? Yeah. 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 So we are white fi so we clean. Right, good. Say low. You're going shopping out. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Massey stores? It is. It is now. So, so did you learn anything today? Yes. What did you learn? Sorry? Were you expecting this? No. No? So were you taken by surprise? Yes, I was. So if a real disaster occurs, are you ready? Yes. Yes. What class are you in? Standard four. And oh, five. and five. So you're preparing for SEA? Yes. CSE. Yes. CSE? Continuous assessment now. Okay, you ready? Yes. You ready? Yes. You ready, ready, ready? Yes, yes. Okay. Alright, that's all. SRC means Superior Regional Corporation, and we are working in conjunction with San Fernando Borough Corporation to have this job. City Corporation. City Corporation. My um, apologies, the City Corporation. Yes. Do we have emergency lighting? Do we have emergency lighting? Do we have No, we don't have a... There's a first aid kit infected. It's suitably trained personnel for its use. No, no, no. Are we trained? No. This is an extension. We're going to say no. Yeah, that makes sense. Not very much. Yeah, I think it was. Sorry, sir. Give me what you need for. You're writing this school? Are you asking about Give me this school, you're writing it. Ladies, so we now ask Melissa and Emily to distribute. Okay. 
Taken out to higher grounds to the shelter. Alright? Commence. Well, it, when you asked us, it was like a normal day. It, really, it wasn't because we kind of had an idea that we were you know, going to it. So it was a bit exciting as well. Um, the ride from school to here, I see, was the most exciting. <laughs> but when the bus is kind of not moving up to here at all, it was a little worrying. And hopefully that won't happen if a tsunami is coming. That's the same bus you're going to use to come up the hill. They need to put it. 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 And we have to put it. And we have to put it. And we have to put it. 
So what, what, what were your views about the, all the siren and the hustle and the bustle? Exactly. <laughs> Alright, so let me go now to St. Gabriel Girls. That's special. Alright. Miss? <laughs> Alright, so what were your thoughts about the siren and... You feel like royalty? Yes. <laughs> all right. How about you? I guess you all said your that walk to the cemetery is a normal walk for you all. Yes. No. Yes. All right. And then the major challenge would have been to get you all across the road safely. That is why we work alongside all our stakeholders, like the traffic wardens, our city police. Our regular police, alright? To ensure your safety at the end of the day as well. Alright? Um, so any more questions again? Any more comments? Yeah? So let's ask the teachers now what they thought about this. I will not ask Miss Howell, but I will ask our co-teacher, Miss <laughs> Lewis. Lewis. What was your, your thoughts on the evacuation today? It was an interesting one considering the location of the school. You know, I never thought about that route through the cemetery to get to the bus. However, I mean, this is a small amount compared to the population of the school. So one has to wonder when we have to evacuate 800 plus children, what is going to take place then? It will be a very similar role to what happened today. We may do it by class by class to avoid a rush, but we have to do that for entertainment. All right? So it will be almost a very similar thing, but class by class, but a little more quick pace. All right, in terms of time, I think you all did well for the time. So give yourselves a round of applause. Come on, teachers now. Your thoughts on today's exercise. I thought that it was, um, it was fun, but it Sure that every student is accounted for. All right. So, representing Separa Regional Corporation, we partnered with San Fernando to have this drill. Um, from the faces of the children, it seems, in spite of all the hustle and hustle, that they seem to enjoy themselves. Oh yes. Um, well, we were glad to be part of that, and um, you will have noticed on the tokens they have all the here. We are not ODPM, but we work in conjunction with ODPM. And the series, they will see some of these things written ODPM and some of them Superior Regional Corporation as well. We were very, um, because of our short staff, we partnered with San Fernando. But if it wasn't for that reason, we would have been conducting a similar exercise at Superior. So, hence the reason we came and we, San Fernando is our, one of our neighbors. We fall be between San Fernando, Pinal, Levy, and Point 14. So we chose to get together with San Fernando to have to be part of this drill here. So um, all in all, <coughs> things may not have run very smooth as we would have liked it to be, but all in all, it turned out to be a success in my opinion, and uh, we're glad to have both schools as being part of this um, drill. Um, that's it um, in a nutshell. The, that's the turn of the I'll hand you back over to Tom. So thanks again for being part of the trip. All right, so Miss, the ticket girls get their refreshment. Bring them back here and then we go back to the bus. Thank you. And you're most welcome.
Okay, it's just fun. We are from Adra Development Relief Association. This is a Seventh-day Adventist organization and we work with the ODPM shelter management team, right? We were asked to come today to assist in the registration of students in a practice run just in case there is any emergency. So we are here, six of us. We did the registration of the children. We had children, we had fifth, 30 girls from St. Gabriel's College, 20 boys from Naparima Boys.
when you do that, she will be excited.
Yes. 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 Okay, you know this was part of a national exercise that took place throughout the country and Tobago. And each regional corporation was responsible for doing some activities of similar nature. Right? Um, ours, in, 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 in some, was evacuating two classes or students from two different schools, a primary school, namely St. Gabriel's Archie School and Naparima Boys College. Um, the purpose is to, or at least was, to evacuate the class from their present location to higher ground because we're sim simulating an earthquake that impacted Trinidad, especially the coastal areas, and when, once a tsunami hit, we have to go to higher ground. So in our case, San Fernando Hill proved to be the highest point in our vicinity, so hence the need and the reason we went San Fernando Hill as our evacuation of master point, right? In order to do that, it required all the stakeholders, as yourself, to take part to make this work. So we, as a body here, are responsible for that coordination and to make sure things run as soon as possible and try to plan as best as possible. However, um, this, as I said before, is a learning exercise. So what I would want is feedback from all the participants in this exercise. Um, good, bad, what you take would, what didn't would. Remember what we said before, this is a learning experience. So no matter how something songs or look to you, if you find it didn't work, please say. This is the time to make your errors, not on the real thing. So if anything you feel didn't work, um, please say. So how I would um, like to do it is to go to each person and get their um, take on it and um, make note of what you think worked, what didn't work, and what recommendations you can have. And um, later on, we sort of summarize, make sure I got everybody's input. And, um, and we expect to uh, have our deputy CEO uh, here shortly to say some words on behalf of the South Atlantic Corporation. Right? So sorry about the little wait. So I'll get some comments from my colleague at the Superior Regional Corporation that worked with us, and then we can proceed. Oh, before I forget, make sure you sign the sign. As um, Mr. Alexander explained, um, each corporation was supposed to um, do something on its own. However, Superior partnered with San Fernando to get this exercise going. Um, he asked that we give our, everybody's opinion on what has taken place, in my humble opinion. I always start my comments with there's no right way and wrong way about a drill. You can only learn from the drill. From our experience in the drill, whatever takes place, we can always try to better it, make it better, and learn from it. Um, um, this drill this morning, the hiccup for me was the part, someone, something went wrong with the timing. Um, because when we got to the traffic light, just the, en the entrance to Nats Boy, there it was, everybody was on spot there. And already the convoy was leaving. So, and we were just, the boat corporations left from here to go out to our various locations with us. Not boys and St. Gabriel's. When I got to the entrance there, both buses were already merging to go onto San Fernando Hill. So that was a little hitch there with the timing. Somehow the timing got mixed up. Other than that, everything else was in place. Beside that, everything was in place. And all who were supposed to be involved and be there, were, they were there except that we had a little mix up with the time. Thereafter, everything sort of ran smoothly, in my opinion. Um, for what we had to do, my part, my role in the assistance of all this operation, everything went well for me. So if we could take comments from the other people now, um, from then we can go to start there from our work, right? As I said, basically, the timing was 
one of the factors. What you can do is for the benefit of everyone, when you talk, if you can state our name and, and organization. Yeah, because you may not be familiar with everyone. Okay, 1874 Constable Dover from San Fernando City Police. As Mom said from the Superior, the MU, timing was one factor. Um, something else that was, it kind of worried me. Yes, it was a drill, but the drivers, so the buses, I don't know the defective bus. I mean, at times when you have emergencies, is any port for a storm. Whatever vehicle we get, we have to work with. But we need to have something better in place for that. Because you have an emergency, yes, you have a tsunami coming, and a bus driving five miles an hour going up the bypass is not cutting it. That's my mo my deepest concern in the whole thing. City police. Um, I know the, um, my mom spoke about um, the from Separia. Separia, you know, <laughs> spoke about um, the timing and um, in the sense that um, they were supposed to be there, but um, I, I, I had a call to, to make and adjust my call to make in that um, tsunami um, warning or drill as the case might be. Um, the students came, up, came out, um, was evacuated. They were placed on the bus. The head count was taken. And once the head count taken, it's time to move, as far as I can see. So the call was mine, and I made that call. The sudden move, as the head count was as the head count taken from both the teacher and um, fire services. And once fire services clear, well, it was time to move. So that is my response. And I feel we had a nice drill, and everything went smooth as as we planned. So Dixon, traffic warden supervisor San Fernando. Um, positives. We had no injuries. We had no untoward incidents. The route was well planned, and in my mind, um, I believe 99% of the drill was well executed. Two things I, I saw as um, falling a little short. Registration could have been a little faster. Maybe we could have had more than one point for registration and then collate the information. And um, the second thing is, in when we have um, to coordinate so many different arms of so many different services, communication seems to have fallen. And if we had proper communication, we would have known where the DMU units were. The persons would be well apprised as to how far along the drill was. So I think it's in the communications department today that we really fell apart. Other than that, I guess, you know, we're on the right track. Adra. We were on time, we were up at the hill. Uh, just a little before we heard the sirens coming. Well, I came, I went up earlier because I wanted to see what was set out for us. Um, the problem with the slowness of the right. registration, some of the kids, like, they were panicking, like, one couldn't remember how to spell her name. So, you know, not even one, but about two or three of them, and couldn't remember the title and all of that, data boot and all of that. So, I, I, I understand, you know, what it has happened. Huh? No. Yeah, but what about yeah, the child who gave her wrong data boot? No, they said that? you won't put the wrong data boot. No, she <laughs> said that's you. what they said. You won't put the wrong data boot. They know their birthdays. They're waiting and for their birthday all year. They know their birthdays. That's why I was inside the class. She had a data boot. One said she won 2014. I said, you can't go 2014. No, you have to. Then she said, Students now, their names are no longer Lisa Jones and Jane Smith. So you have to be open around with the names. The same. pronunciations are very different. Sometimes you see a name, it's a fire. Sometimes it's Sophia. Mm -hmm. They've got a customer to those names. <laughs> yes, there are many differences now. And then with the dates of birth, they came back after saying, Miss, 
they told us the wrong thing. <coughs> they put the wrong thing. So like one girl, she was standing by someone and the person wasn't getting the information right. So she just shifted to somebody else right. and gave the information. Yeah, but I could, I dealt with the girl who said she born 20, oh, 2014. She said 2014. I yes. said, no child, you can't born 2014. Right. Yeah. I don't remember her name. Okay. She I'll said, I say, well, Pampers. Yeah. No, but they said you had the wrong information. <laughs> You're right. putting the wrong information, reporting the wrong information. Okay, we'll take it. No problem. Mm -hmm. Um, it's all about trial and error. Um, you learn from good and bad. Yeah. So, in other say we're blaming this person and that person. Mm -hmm. We have to learn from it and, and to try to better it. So, in case really the, the Moja will be a tech come up, but we have to act. We have to act. Um, the other little key button, I think, was um, the school in that I find it with a little. A little hesitant, kind of, you know. They were not unprepared. You know, we, we, I think they were informed before mm -hmm. what yes. to expect, yes. but it was a little behind. We had a sort of rush, rush them up, man. Mm -hmm. You know, hurry them up because the, the next escort was coming down already. So we had to speed them out. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, you know, we just need to get everything back. You know, planning the right way that everybody had the, the, the correct, you know, know how, how, what, what we expected. So we could get, you know, be positive from it. What I'm gathering here is that the gentleman said the communication. Yeah, yeah, that's the main thing. The main thing here seemed to be the communication. Although at the meeting we had specific timing yeah. when things were going to happen, but somehow it went on all here while uh, all that happens, mm -hmm. it does happen in um, situations, real life situations, it does happen, breakdown in communication. So um, beyond that, here. Other than that. Yeah, but really, the route was planned well. And everything was Everything went well at that point in time. Okay, so can we hear from the participants? Yeah, I'm going to ask you a fact service. Um, that was the time, because we were, we decided 12.15 was the last meeting. Mm -hmm. That was the time, we decided that we should recommence. It did so approximately 1200 or 1201. So 15 or 14 minutes before time. That's probably how you all get done. Right? I was at St. Gabriel's. Right? The children are well placed already in lines. I must inform you, don't expect that in your scenario. Yes, I know that. And I've been saying that during all the meetings. I've been given the worst case scenarios. But that is what we plan for, fire service. We go to deal with situations. So they were well placed, they were well informed what they had to do. It was well executed because. What was well written? Well, you said it. <laughs> right? The information I got from my officers at Lab's voice, it was similar. You know, everybody was aware of what they had to do. What we would advise in the future. <clears throat> no, normally a report is taken at the meeting. Yes. Before they board. Right. And that's what I asked. If it's before they board or if it's on the bus. We did it on the bus. They did it on the bus. Yeah. But probably it could have been done while they were entering. You stand by the door. So you don't have to. So as they enter, yeah. everything quiet, yes. they go. Okay. But they are procedure for these things. Okay. So. Our role really was short lived. We would like to hear what happened after. Okay. Probably at 3 4 minutes at naps, and less than 10 minutes at you know, 5 minutes at 7 minutes. Our role was finished. Our role, I continue to repeat, to ensure complete and safe evacuation, and everybody are hoping for the first day. That happened. Um, so, just to make a comment, uh, when I have been with uh, teachers and school children as well, young mother teachers. But what you see <coughs> happen there, that is what will always be with school children. Well disciplined and well uniform, everything, just as what you see there. That is how they are trained and programmed, if I may use that word. Um, but they are always well disciplined and has to follow what Miss Orson says. You know, so that will always be. Yeah, I, well, I so, guess, yeah. I guess the, the yeah. better discipline children will use, I guess. Yeah. 
I guess that's the better discipline you have used. I guess that would be a whole school and maybe my, let's say maybe if it's recess time in this, they may have a chaos. But one thing that everybody needs to be a fan of so is that they train that they can have to use their hands back and walk on the road. I am happy, I'm happy to hear that. I'm very yeah, happy that's to hear so. That. so that I, if I was there or if I had your role, that would yeah. have to find me. You're happy. Yeah. And you know, we, yeah. hope they, we hope that you will continue that type of thing. Yeah. But I, what I would tell you, and the police will be able to do that. When you're here, Something I see, there's something really, really fun to take place. Mm -hmm. Everybody is there. Yes, yes. And just what we are. And yeah, the children might be better trained, the teachers will start to run. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, there's always the panic, there's always panic. And like I'm um, doing, she's saying that the children um, can remember their names. I, on many occasions, when we go in a real scenario, mm -hmm. To uh, interview people after the situation or during the situation, like a fire, for example, mm -hmm. or we on one occasion I had a house collapse. The lady could not remember anything at all, yeah. not even her own children, mm -hmm. and one of the children had to give us the information. Yes, yes. You, you know, they tend to forget, they tend in that split second, and the excitement, uh -huh. it's very possible that they can forget. Yeah. So, can we hear from you? My name is Frances Lamritu. I'm currently a staff manager to the board for the Religious Department. So honestly, my role has been much more observational than dealing with logistics, and like the rest of you. Um, so beyond today, I would say prior to the event, because I started the job on Monday, um, we were, in terms of me coming into the situation, um, your team, with John and Miss Alexander, they were very good with communicating the route and coming to meet us in such ways to be aware of all the parties involved and what we could expect on the day. It was slightly different because as we all know now, things ran unusual for Trinidad. Things ran 15 minutes ahead of time. But um, I think we could see that everyone, everyone, I suppose everyone had the same focus and they came together and they accomplished the goal eventually. Um, me being an observer, I will agree the one thing I picked up on was the registration and so there needed to be more than one registration point so we can, so the flow into the building would be much faster and that's, that's the feedback I had. Okay, good evening, good afternoon. Ryan Williams, um, Southwest 73. Um, we weren't, I wasn't present for the drill itself today. Um, I didn't see any comments, I couldn't get an idea of what happened. I believe that um, accident and emergency or emergency department, the hospital was on standby, ready for any call that may have come through. Um, but one a question I have though, the teachers um, to training college or through natural progression through grants in teaching, are they given training in ICS? Incident command training, are they given any kind of disaster preparedness training? Because if it is that the children's children are exposed to basically eight hours of the day, they have the responsibility of the children. Once a warning comes on to see there's an emergency situation, they will have certain guidelines and protocols to follow. <coughs> but what about the situation about earthquake or something like that? Are they trained or do they have any kind of inkling of what to do in case of an emergency and so forth? So that's just something for further knowledge, further thoughts. Like a two. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, well, we have um, one teacher, teachers and his teachers to do different courses and to do a degree. Twitter doesn't send teachers to do a degree in education though. Twitter sends teachers to do a degree in of management. Mm. So we have one teacher who availed herself of the opportunity and she did it. Mm. And on uh, when we form committees, we have a crisis management of the committee. Mm. She does not want to be a part of the committee. <laughs> she said she's overburdened with her other work and so, and she doesn't really want to be a part of the committee. So she'll help, but she will uh, why, why, why I brought up the question? Because while it's good that we can hear, simulate a, a, a event and, you know, communicate with the schools what may happen, what could happen, and then we have, you know, business call and so forth, for students to go from the school to the master area. 
it does not equate really for real world scenarios, for real time situations. If it is that we engage the situation where if it is the principals of schools, all the schools have some sort of knowledge, or you don't have to be the principal, it could be somebody in the school who have some sort of knowledge in ICS or in central command or, 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 or staff of management, or whatever you want to call it. And they are they partner with the areas they may be in, the schools in your area and so um, yeah. San Fernando, you all will have you are sure you all have discussions with the schools and stuff like that. Okay, but let me ask tell you what takes place and Tom could be in here. from the disaster management units. Um, what we do, we go to the schools. Um, we do public awareness with schools so they have like an idea and any school who has not, we have not, but it's something I'm going to say, they can request. We go to schools during school time. We try to do it when they have PTA meetings and we try to do the stuff. We do offer training in shelter management and um, cert training, and we do encourage, we try to do it during the uh, August vacation when we can attract some of the teachers as well to come in Spario. We were able to uh, attract some of them to come because you know, some of the training, for example, the cert training is for a week, and it is difficult for some for working people to get the time for the entire week. So we try to do it during the August vacation when we could get people, especially the teachers. So as I said before, um, outside of that, we go to the schools and, and do a little awareness with the, with the, uh, the school. But you are part of the tutor in the training aspect. <coughs> so we of our courses and we, um, Send it out to the public, anybody who wish to. See, that's the thing, eh? mm -hmm. I understand, I understand what you're saying. But the thing is, for me, is you can have the aspect of going to the school to yourself as being a responsible um, division of your your, your, yeah, your, yeah. your department. But if it is that you're looking at holistic, a holistic way of, of thinking of disaster preparedness and disaster training, if it is that you look at administrative side of that going partner with tutor as well being with the regional or the city corporation. Partnering with tutor will say, okay, these are the courses offered during the holidays, the August for teachers. Okay. And, and we don't only do teachers. Well I mean that's all work. Yeah, all work on that but we are well <laughs> in this scenario, in this case I can say this barrier, maybe Mr. Alexander could say for his area. We, during that time, we offer to fire service as well, we, um, CMOH people, mm -hmm. teachers, we try, like when we take, now you can do so many at a time, so we try to get a uh, cross-section of people to come to the training, and some people just not just interested, and then some people especially, we try to incorporate young people as well, and they're just interested in doing it for another certificate to add to their resume. So these are some of the challenges that we face. I don't know if um, Mr. Alexander has the same um, reaction in his area. Mr. Alexander, you would like to contribute to um, anything concerning what, that? What you're saying is probably for on a ministerial level for the yeah. tutor to engage with share ed and work that out. And um, we can partner once that is done and do our part. Um, we have ongoing public awareness programs that we do primary schools, but it's mainly geared towards the students more so, and only when we have some training is when we get the adults or shelter managers, and sometimes we get teachers um, in some of those programs. However, it's not a formalized um, program as what you suggest, yeah, suggest that they have, so that I believe would have to be done on, on a more ministerial level and have it as part or even part of the training college program for teachers incorporated there uh, is where I think they should be going with it. And then we in the field can just supplement that education and keep them up to date. But the training should be done probably from the training college that is where they train the teachers. That's, a, that's an excellent suggestion yes. for us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Teachers. While they are trying to put all that in place, contact the emergency services. Yeah. Yeah. But the that's what the committee is comprised of. Yeah. Because that takes a time to share public policy. Yeah. And natural disaster takes place. Yes. 
the primary body of certain species to have the data types. If somebody has a run to process pool station, or fire station, if there's no other company station, they're going to be processing so services. We can't wait for this plan to talk. Okay, success? Professor Bertrand, who <laughs> remember your name now. <laughs> <laughs> so we are having our review, your yes. thoughts, comments on uh, today's. <coughs> Good afternoon to everybody. Um, overall, I thought it was an excellent effort after all you know, the plan that we had. I want to make special mention to the municipal police. <coughs> a job well done. Traffic warden as well, department. A job well done. Fire service, Red Cross, and all the other stakeholders, especially the friendly. Um, forestry. Forestry. <laughs> um, and some last minute communications we have concerning which bus would have come with first. I just want to share some time with you all as a reflection of <coughs> um, our performance today. Um, the students left the school at 11.59. They got out of the park at 12.02. Three minutes. Excellent. Uh, the base of the hill, we got to the base of the San Fernando Hill, 12.15. Summit of the hill at 12.20. Now, I just came out of the middle manager because again I want to have it fresh. And uh, I was pleased with our performance as being the sole main transport provider. Yes, we were able to um, provide a service or transport for evacuants today. But it was not up to our you know, standard as being a um, professional transport provider in the Trinidad and Republic, Trinidad Tobago, or public transport on the whole. We had some mechanical problems that most of you might not probably would have been aware of. But it just goes to show these drills are not just putting things down and trying to accomplish them. It's a learning lesson for me as well as being the representative for PTSD, to let me know. Right, this experience and the data collected here is a clear indication to me where we are at as a cooperation and the amount of work that we still have to do. Because given a real life scenario, you're not supposed to be guessing with equipment. And by extension, I did a dry run yesterday. It wouldn't it would like just we came out and guessed. So we had time to prep the vehicles and we still had problems. So which means we have a lot of more work to be done in providing a proper reliable service to the citizens of this island, especially the residents of San Fernando, by extension, um, superior. superior. So, um, I just want to apologize. I mean, we were able to accomplish it, but it should not be, we get you. It should be, yes, excellent. But all in all, I mean, the words were just some of the stuff that I have found on the registration and stuff. We, I was out of them. I was just dealing with the transport side, the convoy, and so on. These things were exceptional. Police had software. Um, Traffic Warden, uh, Fire Service, Red Cross, Job well done. That's it for me. Mr. Bertrand, I hear you and how you apologizing, right? Mm -hmm. While you apologizing, things do go wrong. But Even in a real life scenario, things do go wrong. I had a drill, we had ours from Superior and operating down at Tita. And, on the way, and we wanted to stay at Superior and test our response to get down to Cedras because our main office is in Separia, but we extended Icacus. So we stayed at the office and we wanted to go down there to uh, test our response and how much time it will take us and we're going with the police and the siren and our um, van got into an accident. So while you try to make it as real, things do happen and in a real life scenario, <coughs> these things more than likely will happen. So when these things happen, I incorporate them in my dream. For example, we had to go down and then down in Cedras, we started, we did our ICS system,
stay that separate and we are communicating the down with Cedrus with the fire and the police and all these people we had on the ground. And we, 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 we were evacuating our children from the classroom to their muster point and back into the classroom. And there was, was an officer came in his drunken stupor and said, no, no, it's a drill. You can't have the children here. March them out of the schoolyard and to a shelter that we had um, identified. But because the same ICS system, I was there, fire, police, and everything, she was able to communicate with her colleagues down in Cedrus and get them to correct that situation. We in Safari. So it's not that everything will go perfect. We would like it to be so, but in a real scenario, it will be far from good. So this is what we will do. We will learn from all of this. So the relief, the relief of the public, um, just to preempt stuff, um, we will be engaging in a program to have two units assigned for emergency response and a team. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on that. Okay. That, that is not the same for yeah, now, but kind of that problem is that. But that, that, that. that is my job, and my job is not guessing. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would have been a game show. <laughs> but this is, this is to make sure, because in the evacuation process, we are very, very important. Mm -hmm. it, why is it trying to save life if you have a breakdown? You're taking lives. Yes. And I yes. don't want to be part of that. <laughs> yes, none of us so, want to be yeah, so I, part of I was, that. So I was very thankful for today's exercise. It was a benchmark to let yes. me know where I am at. That and what I have to correct. This is a whole learning experience. Exactly. So, so it was a success I started, before you came in, I said, there's no right way or wrong way. All we could do from this is... It was a shot across the ball for us <laughs> at the corporation. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to the yes. next person. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Atene Aspiri. I'm here with San Fernando City Police. And first of all, I need to commend Mr. Alexander and his crew on this successful activity. Hats off to all the stakeholders, especially my crew. They were handpicked. <laughs> especially my crew, they were handpicked. Right? Um, I found that this exercise went well. And I, I, I must mention something to Mr. Bertrand. Your drivers, I commend them. I commend them. Yes, I beat you down the road, but I commend them. And I'll tell you why I commend them. Because what we actually had for them was a real life scenario. We had defective buses, and they managed themselves well. They didn't panic. They had, anything could happen with those buses, yes. we had an issue. Yes. And they had the children's life at stake and everybody was saying a drill, but we actually had yes. a situation and those young men handled themselves well. So I commend them for that. I must say, yes, we had a communication problem. But despite that, the, ex the exercise, we had no disruptions, we had no delays, it ran smoothly. The disaster management people, yes, they had to pick up with us, but you have to understand that the actual evacuation was running smoothly. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. So I was very impressed with the contributions of all the stakeholders, all. Yes. I was especially impressed with um, when I when we reached at the junctions and we saw that the traffic police was there managing the traffic, we actually went through smooth. The only thing that may have delayed us, and that is natural, is that sometimes the passageway between vehicles, the bus could not go. But that was the only thing, and we can't help that. That is beyond our control. But this exercise went well, and I commend everybody who would have participated in this. Um, I would not like to have this experience in real. <laughs> contribution for today. Thank you. Ms. Helen, Vice Principal. Yeah. I was grateful for the opportunity because we haven't had a drill in a long time. We really wanted a fire drill for the entire school, but this gives an insight into how to deal with information now. The points at hand I was about to raise that what I would have raised would have been what Fire said in terms of the rule. I was uncertain if it should be inside or outside, but remember with little children, the voice. It would have been easier for us to do it on board. But as you say, in the question of timing, it should have been outside. Uh, the 
registration was another point. We spoke about that. And uh, the buses. We're also going to talk about the buses, the time. As Sir so said over there, going, not only going up the hill, along the um, highway, it was going really well. And then as we got on the bypass, it just slowed down. And we couldn't tell why. And then there was overheating. And the light was coming on. <laughs> things were happening, but the children didn't panic. They were just feeling happy. <laughs> and, um, but you know, there were concerns. But we made it. And I, as was just said, I think it was successful. I had a very good learning experience. I'm thankful to be part of it, and thanks for the support. Hi, good afternoon. I'm representing Southwest Regional Health Authority Disaster Coordinator. Um, for us, our role basically was a supporting event of. So there was any really casualties or incidents that we could have ensured that these students got brought to uh, care at the facility. Uh, for me, Mr. Alexander, they contacted me at 10.59 and informed me of the incident act, um, activation. So that was, that was noted. In reference to the exercise, there are some quick comments for Officer Rivers and the school teacher. So I commend you on the decision you made. It showed leadership and in disaster and community situations, you must have leadership and somebody must be able to, to take that precise decision and make a decision. Time to go, time to go. Right? Is that you do something or you do nothing? And you did something. Or any exercises, we, we, we time it and stuff like that, but exercise. In real life, somebody there would have to, have to make a decision. Right? But as you look at the context of the drill, in terms of get, um, a tsunami, um, and we just put it back into the school and make a decision. Because you have, just as in security management, you have a principal on board, and you just take a principal, you know, right? These are some of the you know, you guys can cut up. Mm -hmm. And so, it was a good decision, in my, in my view. In reference to the bus driver, well, I came up with all of the emergency services. And emergency services were the devil's service, like the ambulance services. Yeah, they are vehicles, buses are vehicles. And we had had situations responding to the CPR when people are ambulance going on. So that's you no know, feasible, that happens. Mm -hmm. What it does, it gives you on the reality to think, always have a plan, right? And then you call for backup, you do whatever it is in your So yes, and I'm happy all those things happening in the exercise. Mm -hmm. It allows us to think of the box and just say it's a normal drill and you can get from point A to point B point C. It doesn't, it, it doesn't prove or test anything when, when it happens like that. Right. You must have the things that we don't plan for. Right? So, and in reference to school, I know most schools, they are safety officers. I mean, it, it, it extends to, to primary schools who can lead that charge. As so we see the whole evacuation of, of school and creating uh, emergency plans. As Mr. and I, we were discussing prior, I would have liked to see tested in the school system that two or three or four people trying to call that because most schools normally have one telephone yeah. uh, telephone lines and for me that, that's a major concern. We when they just say we are trying to test the exercise and that line was engaged. What happens? Right? And overall, that's the thing. City Police. Um first time being part of a drill like this and to me, you know, I mean it raises questions in my mind if actually we have a real life scenario like this. It means to say that the whole city and the whole everybody would be in a panic. You know, so whereas with a drill you have everything having you sat down and planned the time and what time we live in and how everything is supposed to go or whatever. In a real life situation is the whole school would be evacuated and not just a classroom. In a real life situation, is several buses would be needed and not just two buses. In a real life situation, but, um, the coordinator of the drill to go, yeah, the coordinator of the drill to go. Yes, he would have made a decision today, you know, but at the end of it is like from the moment we get the call at the station, being police officers or moment fire and them get the call and that bell started to ring and the station started to go and everybody is in, let's go, let's go, let's go. You know, it's like, it's a whole adrenaline rush. And, but at the end of the day, you know that, well, okay, you want to ensure safety 
for the children, for the citizens, for everybody who we are at this point in charge of now. So, all stakeholders, it was commendable, I mean, because everything was in place. The outriders on the bikes, the police vehicles back and front to escort the, the whole thing, the buses, the forestry, everybody, be, be it that is like, they were in place in that, just by just a call, if there was supposed to be a situation, even a minor one or whatever, at least you know that, well, okay, you will be able to function even if this probably was not a planned situation. So, all hats to everybody. Thank you. Miller Coyla Strong, Forrester Tree. Um, our job was, I suppose, listening to you all was very simple. It was just to get the, the shelter ready. And I think we did that to the best of our capacity. What um, we observed was, you know, sometimes it's necessary not to have too many people giving instructions all at once. So that we, when my instruction there was to get it ready, put out chairs and so on, somebody said, listen, leave all the chairs on the wall when the students come and if they want a chair, they will take a chair. Or um, then we had the situation with the registration and one of the ATRA people was turned out to be correct. Uh, the gentleman, he was telling me, listen, we need to have two tables. Not that I think that that would have made the registration faster. It would have made you all maybe a little more comfortable. I felt the process was very, very slow. And um, I know that we all are going to get senior at some point in time, but I felt that we should have had younger people. Because in terms of listening and so on, when you stood up, somebody asked um, a person, and I was observing, what's your name? And they write, and what, and they, you know, there was a delay in just being on top of it and being very fast. So I think the people who are taking that sort of information need to be a little faster, or maybe some other system could be worked out you know, how you get information. Okay, um, you all were at the hill, you all, um, you all came up on the hill and left one hour and 27 minutes. I, you, about one hour and 27 minutes. Um, to me, that's it, I have, you know, I could not really comment on the rest of the, um, the process because I was basically on the hill. But I also felt that it was a very, very good attempt, you know. And we also, um, we could have shut off the, we could have shut down the hill, close it off. But we decided to piggyback on your operation, <laughs> that we will also test our responses in case something happens and somebody calls upon us, we would have an idea like what is required of us. So that we were also, we also benefited from, from the exercise. From Max, um, could we have a comment or comment from Max? Okay. Well, first I have to say that um, it was a, a very good experience, and um, like everyone has said, you know, it, we are able to see our little um, areas where we need to improve. I died in the experience, <laughs> <laughs> along with two of my colleagues. Because, and that was due to a faulty, or which we have to correct now, our faulty um, PA system. The location I was at in the school at the time, there was no um, speaker. I was not aware of that. So I'm listening for the PA system saying emergency, um, in, in, exercise, 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 and I heard nothing. So um, when I came out from where I was, I saw the boys walking. And um, I thought they were just, I don't know what I thought at that point in time. Because you died. <laughs> yeah, but the point is, I, I got laughed and I, I died, I drowned in the sea. <laughs> but eventually, um, we got a ride up to the hill and we were just behind the buses, so we weren't too late at this point. You know. But the whole experience showed us where we need to improve our facilities in, in the event of a real disaster because many of our students would not make it if we continue with what we have with our systems as we have it. 
but um, I must say the whole um, evacuation process was very um, efficient. The officers and all who were involved were on time. And they, they were there. The um, Red Cross, the fire officer, um, were there well in advance. The disaster personnel arrived as well, but um, you know the evacuation of the students went very well, and they were all safe. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> Look, so, with pretty much everything that everyone has said so far, it was a brilliant um, exercise. I'm so happy that we actually have a club. So most of the um, participants from our school, the students, were boys who are actually in the Disaster Preparedness Club. So they found um, that the exercise was you know, really good. They enjoyed themselves. They loved the sirens. They, they loved the fact that they you know, were being exported by all these blaring sirens and stuff like that. And, and um, it was a great learning experience. We obviously need to work on, on our, um, our shortcomings as well. But I hope that we you know, could have more of these training exercises, of course, available to us. So um, we are full of the time to with answer communication. Give us a feedback. What was your view, or maybe how your operations went in terms of communication among staff and that kind of thing? Give us a little feedback. Good afternoon, everyone. And so much communication technician, staff, and disaster. My role was more in the role, but still an important one, which was communications, where we had a communication established with every person who outside operating. Uh, well, of course, I know a lot of people made reference to a lack of communication. So that will also be a point that we can work on next time when we have a common channel that everybody can operate on so as to prevent that gap next time. Because communication is also an essential part of any emergency response. Good afternoon, everyone. Hamina Asmat, Phil Officer, AKA Tom. All right, um, how should I start? With timing, of course, because by the time we got there, the cover already had left. Right. And so, in a real life emergency, Carter, I applaud you for taking that decision and go. Um, in terms of all the other key stakeholders, I think they function extremely well. Everybody knew their role because when we were at Urban Street, they made it block to come back into the cemetery. We saw fire service was there at Urban Park still, which was about 10 minutes after they would have pulled off. Um, even in terms of going up the hill, it was okay with us because we were right behind you. We, we had caught up by that time with the convoy or heading up the hill. Um, in terms of the registration, these are the people who volunteer their time willingly because it's not a paying job that gets paid for, for being a shelter manager. And so we have to use the best resources we have. And so sometimes they may be a bit slow, but these are resources we have to work with. Because every time we do check the management training, there are always persons who would drop out and don't be interested after a period of time. So in the, in the process could be slow, but it's a necessary process and we have to go through that drug that mill. We have to answer the question that we did form for accountability purposes. So that's why I was share with that group boys. It's supposed to be rowdy by now. Because by, literally by now people are tired. They have of, Huh? Once they have Wi-Fi. Yeah, I was telling them, literally after a few years like that, people will be tired and not come and have a line to the registration and a long process. So, but as I said, that's what we have to work with and we still have thank you very much for sharing that time with us. Um, Red Cross, again, we can't complain. Mel said she had to run from Sutton Street across the map. Remember, boys almost get knocked down, but she had to run there to keep up with the pace. All right, so. That is our comments. Um, promise to come here from Jai and I, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And um, other than that, I, I, from all the years gone by, we certainly have seen and tried to overcome our challenges. Probably the main challenge we would have had was the time we did MCPD drill, when we had to go up a one-way street. <laughs> make a, make a, a, a normal street on one-way street. Get knocked up for it, but guess what? It's a learning experience. Every single time I do a drill, I always have to remember certain people in this drill. Don't laugh. 
But as I said, we have encountered some of these problems and it's a learning curve. And so I'm sure next year will be even a, a, a greater experience. Thank so you. thank you. Hi, afternoon everyone. I'm Melissa Mohamed, Field Officer for Spire Regional Corporation. Um, my views are obviously the same as everyone around the table here. Um, our experience from Spire compared to San Fernando is, to my knowledge, similar. Uh, we both have our falls, uh, but we learn from it and it's a learning curve. And I just want to say thanks for um, inviting us to San Fernando um, to join this drill. And um, we hope that next year we could use some of our improvements to make it a more successful drill. Excellent. So we have heard from everybody, yes, and um, I think that's a couple of things. And between the mix, um, we took up some thing, um, the point that um, um, everybody seemed, it made every, a lot of people away. Some people who were not ever part of a drill. I got that, you know, it, they started making them think, oh no, if something really should happen, what will be the situation? So it sparked some kind of interested people to be, you know, to be more interested in this kind of um, thing, which is, could face us as we speak. Okay. Anything could happen. Just yes. to add, one of the children said something is, if this happens when there's no school, what do we do? Those <laughs> <laughs> no, would evacuate us from where? <laughs> well, when we do come to the school, and we could probably ask the staff, Alexander, to come to the school to do something with you, we would normally tell them not only for in school, but we thought we also tell them what to do if they are at home and how to prepare themselves in the event of anything. So it's not only for like evacuating the school; they learn other things as well. They. So um, yes, my dear. One other question too. Um, well, I heard Tom and everybody else who, um, from the administrative point of view, the ODP is like, um, uh, next year it would be, you know, uh, it would be for the improvement or so forth. Yes, this may probably be, um, okay, a once a year thing, you know, as in, well, okay, a specific day every year or something of this sort. But um, won't it be, you know, a bit more? Um, in effective or whatever, if it is like probably you have these kind of drills, I mean, maybe not on a wide scale, but you know, on a smaller scale, you know, every now and then, probably three months, six months, or you know, twice a year or something like that. So it wouldn't be like every year there would always be calamity or whatever. People would be in the know and so forth, you know, I mean, it doesn't always have to be a tsunami drill, but I'm sure there are a lot more there are disaster drills that could be carried out. So, you know, people would, you know, it would just would be like, okay, after this drill, not till next year again, and then when next year come, it's like you're going through a whole, let's start a planet again to make sure it don't happen like the, like last year with time and this and that and the other. But, you know, if you have it every now and then, you know, a different thing, probably flood, earthquake, so forth, hurricane, or the, you know, those type of things. Three things. Um, I hear you. Um, one is very costly to run the uh, the do the drip. It's a, a huge cost in corporation. Mm -hmm. Um Two, we hear that every time we have a drill, and no matter how many times you do it. And if we do think about the new field, what will we will be? <laughs> so you could do run this drill. How many times something will go wrong? <laughs> will go wrong, right? Yeah. And three, this time it's not only on a tsunami. It's based on a tsunami and on a storm because the whole three-day thing, the, the name of it is that storm. So part of it is um, a tsunami and part of it is um, being tested for a storm. I don't know if I live on that, anything else to add? Yes. Um, and yes. I, I, was, I just would like to agree sure. with the officer. Because I think the point she's making is it is going to sensitize people so that it's not a, a, a one stop something. And by extension, I, I think somebody else mentioned it the Ministry of Education and people, the school, they should be mandated to have drills more than one time per term. Because usually, maybe you all can run competitions, 
drill competitions, you know, you have time them how long it takes to come out of the classrooms and so on. Um, also, no, really. In my area, it is in no in forestry. What we tried to do for environmental awareness was to run competitions and so on. Whether they write an essay or something, and you give them, you give them some sort of a plaque or the school a plaque. <coughs> Sensitizing them is an important thing at first. You give them uh, exercise once a year it becomes like an excursion. When those kids came up on that hill today, all were smiling, all were waving, and so on. You know. Um, uh, it was it was a, like a joy for them just to be outside and the exercise. Well, actually, um, we don't always do schools, yeah? Like that, mm -hmm. some corporations, street food, mm -hmm. maybe at the streets, popular streets. Like I did school on one occasion, and I did a street, two streets, and we got with people under that school trip. And it's not until you get them involved that it sparks their interest, because um, we do a lot of awareness. And you will invite people to come so that you will enlighten them, not only through the drill, but for their, their knowledge to know what to do, even if you're home in your house and you go to get a call and they do not come. Sometimes we invite other um, agencies to go along with us to have public awareness. They don't come. You will offer them, you tell them, um, well, you'll prepare little snacks to try them, snack plates to encourage them to come. They don't come. I have been because we have NGC lines in our area, so we um, had a um, went house to house because NGC wanted to do a public awareness, so the people who live near to the lines would know if there is a leak, what to do, numbers to call. We went house to house and put the flyers in each person. We went along with them. Three people turned up. We have a lot of problems getting people or to spark their interest. But not like how we had this drill here, and, and like when I in, in, got the street and people to come out, is then, you know, it now sparked their interest. It now spark. But having it more often in the year, like on a big scale like this, is very, very costly to the corporation. Maybe it was trick again. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, again, to reinforce the point. It will sensitize them. I know we will have all our constraints with the economic factors. And I really, um, I don't know if I came across kind of very harsh considering the registration. But um, I do not mean to, to attack the voluntary organization. I just felt that younger people would have been able to pick up very much faster. Yeah, probably and they may not yeah, be interested in So even the headcounts from the buses when they're coming out, could that be used fast on or so for them to just sort of reinforce the work? Yeah. Because they would have had taken a role on the bus. Yeah. But that same form, mind you, that they use, they only fill up part of the form. And if you, um, the, that, this is a form on a national basis, if anything happens, and people are to register. That is the said form, and we did not complete the entire form. We just did the top of the form. So the registration, there, there is a lot. There are a lot of things you have to take, or information. There's a lot of information that you have to put on that form, and we did not go through that form. So that in itself, it will be a total chaos. So like when I have my journalist people, you see how they take it there. Our people set up to make noise. <laughs> well, it's 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 you're taking too long, you know, and I'm hungry, and they fall falling down, and they feel thin, I make mine real dramatic. <laughs> well, it really took about, it yeah, it takes about time, 10 but, minutes. Yeah, but to do four hours. Yeah, but it really has a lot of questions. Because um, they have more details there, eh? whether you have allergies, if you're taking medication, and we didn't do all of that. We just took the basic information. So all in all, um, we don't want to keep you all back too long. I think we'll have Mr. Um, Hayden wrap up. I don't know if you have Yes, my staff, everybody gave their contribution, including my staff. So by the time Mr. Um, Hayden, Mr. Alexander is um, going to give up the closing up.
we have a few tokens for people gathered here, so Melissa and Kimberly will be doing okay. that while Mr. Alexander is talking. Okay, I, I, I solicited the feedback from TTPS because they couldn't stay um, for this. They had something else to attend to, right? So two points they made. Um, they, was, they indicated that the lead between the the, lead, the head vehicle and, and the buses, the, uh, that lead was a bit too long in the convoy. And the second thing they say that the space from the old riders uh, to the buses, that was too small. And um, they have to use their, the drivers, that is, to use their mirrors because I don't think they said they accommodated the old riders too well in terms of traveling. You say on a, on a convoy, whether all riders have to be in front, let the convoy go, go and then when they drop back, they have to sort of overtake and come back to the front. So you say that um, that process, the spacing was very narrow to have to operate with, and the lead vehicle had too long a distance between the lead vehicle and the bus. So I don't know when the bus slowed down that caused that. Now you know. Now I know what uh, when you're in, you weren't here yet. So now I know when the bus experienced some difficulties. So probably that created that gap a little longer than what it should be. It was. I was. You know, it's in the gap between the lead vehicle and the bus. The gap between the lead vehicle and the buses. And yeah. the bus. But yeah. yeah. two, it was it was too huge. Yeah. yeah. But that's because we had problems. No, no. I'm yeah. saying when you give this, you weren't here yet. Oh, 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 oh. So I'm saying now, in retrospect, after I hear everything, then I can understand why it was created. Right, right. right. So, yeah. All right. My, um, my take was to begin, okay, um, to address the start time. We did officially say we would start at 12.15, and I communicated this to all parties, and PR was to be here for 12 and we were to move at that time, so that 15 minutes was to get them to each location. There would be two people, one at each of the master points. So we had to do that before 12.15, between 12 and 12.15. The other thing with the starting time, in relation to communication, the drill was to have communication placed with the lead vehicle, one of the radios. Where's the radio? Okay. Where's that so? Right? So this way the lead vehicle would have been able to speak to us in the DMU in case we have to use an alternative route and we have to change course so everybody would be aware of any changes taking place. So once um, once that didn't happen, that contributed to lack of some of the communication we are talking about that if we have lead vehicle, we'll all um, be able to taken off and uh, changes if it was there any. So once that happened that the drill started ahead of time, the communication with the lead vehicle, that part went out the window at one time. But however, despite um, Sergeant Cat was enthusiasm that started before I <laughs> um, there's a couple of things that happened. No no when these things happen, um, one yeah, thing um, you can delegate some of the responsibilities because we know is happening so this way when we have some future drills some of the things we may uh, need to do I can call and expect that it could be done because they had some practice they had some leadership and you had some coursework in this too so I know right so um, when things happen we, is is is, is um, a situation where you can count on now because from the practical experience you got in doing this too so when something is not all lost at all, there's something gained also, right? So the experience, right? And the main thing for this we have to keep remembering is practice, practice, practice. Once these things happen, um, and remember, the saying is practice make perfect that is not ready. True. You practice you make improvements. Right? You know, can be perfect, so the practice would make improvements. Um, one of the benefits of doing this too is familiarity. You see, once we do this, we get familiar with our stakeholders, we get familiar with us, we have an idea of what is to be done. Now, when something real happens, you will be called upon. Now, when the CEO, mayor, or other people in the corporation have to ask for resources in terms of equipment and people, it's much easier when you're familiar 
with the people you call it. So when you <coughs> ask for this, I say, well, who's this? You don't have to ask who's this. You know who is requesting it. So if you have to ask somebody, your superior, you can say, yeah, I, I know Mr. Alexander, we did Jews with him. So the corporation asked for this. Yes, we did this with them before. So part of this whole thing is to, is to create that familiarity so that when something happens, even because a lot of times you can't plan for everything, but when it do happen, you have no control. The good thing is you're familiar with the stakeholders, they're familiar with you, and this way you can get things done, right? The other thing is the coordination, which could always be better because once you have so many different variables, coordinating becomes an issue and a challenge. So by doing even the small things, you see the challenge in coordinating everything, and when something big happens, it will tell you the type of coordination necessary, right? And, and the other thing to address would be that we do set up our own drills too a lot of times that in 2000, apart from the national drill, we usually try to have our own drills. So in 2013, we had our own fire drill um, in Skinner Park, Operation Emilia. Uh, last year, we did our tabletop showing ICS. Part of it, right? Um, we don't have uh, our drill uh, schedule for this year uh, yet, so we don't know what we may do this year. But we usually do something outside of the national drill that we do on, on our own, right? So we try to do that, and we do partner with people like Petra Trin, and we did two fence line exercises. We did that with the residents in Marbella near the fence line community, the Petra Trin, and we did it in the residents. Uh, Pleasantville because there's some lines running through the Pleasantville Secondary School and we simulated those lines exploding, right? And that was done in 2013. 10, 10, 11. The last one in Pleasantville is 13, right? 13, yeah. yeah. So uh, we do have that too and we partner with Petrochin for other drills. They, they have an evacuation exercise which we were doing, and I think um, in November, with the rain, um, they had um, rescheduled it for an ongoing period. So, so sometime again, they will do a full scale exercise, and we'll be participating in that. So yes, I, I, I like the comments. I, I see everybody was, was on the ball. I, I, this is good. Um, I'm going to take all these feedbacks and, and summarize them. I tried to jump over the notes from here to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I just want to stress the importance of having all the stakeholders on board. The next area we'll be looking at, uh, we'll be revisiting our egress plan. And I would need some of your participation and get in that. And I have um, uh, some other stakeholders who are customarily not here. And I'm getting some help in getting them to the table. Right? Super <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we expect to, to re re revisit our um, egress plan and, and have that going probably within the next month. We should be having a meeting on that. So you may be called upon to attend some other stakeholders meeting in regards to that, right? So I want to take the opportunity to thank you for participating. Uh, there's a lot of variables and coordinating activities that have to take place. We try to plan ahead as much as possible and as you see, um, some of the realities step in. Yesterday I spoke to Bertrand, they do that gyro. Today they are mechanical. You can't, you can't get away from it. So these are, these are the real things that happen. So imagine if you never practice anything. So I always say doing one is a big difference than zero. All right. I went to a school one time doing awareness and they tell me they did an evacuation drill and it was a total disaster. So I always tell them, well, no, I think it was very good. They said, what? Everybody was confused and they didn't know where they were going on. So I said, okay, so as of today, right now, if something happens and you leave that door, you know they go left or right? They say yes. I said, okay, you know where the muster point is? They say yes. So I said, so even just by those two things you didn't know before. So you learn now, and if you do have an emergency, you know exactly what to do. So although that was a disaster, it was a good learning experience. So this is what I want you to take out of this, that although we are here and, and we have um, some challenges and other things that took place, it's a good learning experience, and everybody was pretty forthright and honest in the evaluation. So we take what didn't work, and we take what didn't work, and try to improve.
then um, and work on them. And the main thing is to make sure we can count on your cooperation and support in all our endeavors that we do in the future. Right? So I would like to turn you over to our deputy CEO, Mrs. Africa and Fernando C. Corporation. I want to thank everyone um, for the support that you all have given to the San Fernando City Corporation. I want to um, Sapaya for that, for that extra support to our disaster management unit, right? So because we, we are stronger in numbers. Um, I just want, I also want to observe that from the last um, drill we had, national drill we had, I see we have some new or new stakeholders in terms of the schools, in terms of the um, amount of participation we had from the schools, which which I, I, I'm glad to see because it, it starts with the school and that awareness in terms of the need to be prepared for disaster is a good ground for sewing. So I was happy to see that we had um, schools participated in the whole process and actually staying back and, and giving the comments, right? Um, well, in terms of having the exercise <coughs> now, often, that's, we all know what the monetary cost involved, but as an in-house department or disaster, management unit they do um, embark on, on enlightening and educating and doing awareness throughout San So we, we still try on a small scale to have that awareness develop and, and with these exercises it's going from strength to strength and um, therefore if a disaster should happen as Mr. Um, Alexander indicated there would be this camaraderie and this communication link that will be able so we could just communicate with each other and say hey so 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 we need this we need that so it will bring um, a unity and cooperation in terms of responding we will reduce panic we will reduce um, duplication and we will definitely increase lives I say them on life. So I always look forward to this exercise, though I'm never on the ground. Um, but um, I'm, or I always look forward to come here and hear the various comments and Mr. Alexander and his team and his colleagues support me. They are moving from strength to strength, right? So I want to um, thank everyone for that support that you're giving the city of San Fernando because we have to be each other's keeper and uh, um, we have to care about what happens to us and to our um, people in this city. So once again, thanks for the cooperation, thanks for the support and uh, we look forward to that after this exercise, if, although we do it once a year, the communication is always there, always seeking some sort of assistance from each other. So thank you again and please extend the importance to your people, to your work area. You could, each one could teach one and spread the message and give that commitment. And let, uh, the only thing I'm concerned is that children must know the, the seriousness of it. I mean, they think it's a day of excitement and so on. But what is the purpose behind it and to build that awareness that we must have a plan of action for disaster, a, 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 a system that we're going to be organized and focused and, and as to what we're going to be doing. So it wasn't just about having a ride and having a good time but what was it to save lives and to respond to any disaster in, in, a, in a coherent way. So thank you for your time.
check to see if anything is expired and you just replace them. So please, when you get them, please, uh, we have them in stock all the time. Um, so just please check whatever has expired, just replace them. And thanks to Sir and San Fernando for allowing us to be part of their drill. We were short staff, so we partnered with San Fernando. So we were very happy to be here, and I want to take the opportunity on behalf of my staff and by extension of our corporation to thank the San Fernando City Corporation for allowing us to be part of their drill. Well, I certainly <laughs> want to take, leave the best for last to thank Sir and my, my colleague here, Donna Woods. Um, the coordination of this drill and the planning, we went into it, and, and this is one of the first times we did uh, a collaborative effort, and I think it worked out excellent. So um, we know each other's strengths and, and what we can work with, and I want to take the opportunity to personally thank you for your participation, not only in terms of the, the tokens and so on, but the willingness to, to um, participate, to be here, be at the meetings and so on, and the cooperation was, was above and beyond the quality. So, all yes. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, without further ado, take a big thank you and look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Make sure you all sign the sign in sheet. <laughs> this is the San Fernando Disaster Management Unit. I'm Hayden Alexander, Disaster Management Coordinator. I'm surrounded here by my able and willing staff. On my far left is Mr. Ansel Lynch, our communication technician. My immediate left is Mr. Hamid Hasmat, or one of our two field officers. My immediate right is Mr. Diona Ryan Jaikaran, our second field officer. And to my extreme right is Mr. Roberto Sampet, our clerical assistant. We here are the San Fernando Disaster Management Unit. We just finished participating in the national exercise called Operation Dark Storm. Here at the unit, we have simulated the evacuation of two schools due to an earthquake which caused a tsunami. We evacuated Naparima Boys College, a class there, and also St. Gabriel's RC School on Lord Street, San Fernando. In an evacuation exercise, we usually take members or evacuees to higher ground, and in our case, we use the San Fernando Hill. Could you cut? We also have joining us and working collaboratively is Ms. Donna Woods, the Disaster Management Coordinator from the Superior Regional Corporation. This joint operation took place today as part of the national exercise and we work collaboratively in evacuating students from both schools. We work with stakeholders such as PTSC, city police, central police, fire, Red Cross, traffic wardens, and forestry division. We all came together here to make sure that all the students were safely mustered at their muster point and taken by convoy with police as the lead escort vehicle safely to San Fernando Hill where they were registered and uh, given information about disaster preparedness and a snack and some feedback and then they were returned safely to their schools and the stakeholders were uh, the stakeholders were here for the after action review, which we momentarily have completed. So this is us signing off from the San Fernando Disaster Management Unit. And we all are thankful for their feedback, both positive, negative, and recommendations for improvement that were given throughout the evening session uh, as part of our after action review. So here, I'd like to thank you on behalf of Superior Regional Corporation and the San Fernando Disaster Management Unit for a job well done, and we look forward to future collaborations um, in time to come. Thank you.